Well, the transfer window is all closed, and most importantly, we've done uh, we've done one business in terms of incomings, and of course, I think Arsenal have six incomings and twenty one outgoings this season uh, in this season's summer transfer window. But again, <clears throat> everywhere on Twitter, you'll find some statistics that tells you that Takehiro Tomiyasu is actually a very smart buy. What does he actually bring in uh, in Mikel Arteta's system, or why why was he selected out of all? It is actually explained by Athletic.com why Takahiro Tomiyasu was selected. I've already done, done a thread. Uh, I brought information from a thread already in a couple of my videos, actually. Not uh, yeah, but this one also stands out true to its name. Uh, Takahiro Tomiyasu, why he was the guy that we actually can use a lot um, in a lot of aspects. So uh, goal analysis. Sam, there's an account on Twitter. They say that, or uh, uh, yeah. For Arsenal fans, when Takehiro Tomiyasu lined up at right back last season, he tucked in centrally at a high rate, while Bologna's left back stayed higher and wider. Which means Tierney can go full on with the attack, and Takehiro can stay behind. And you can see Tomiyasu's, uh, uh, you know, uh, the levels at which Tomiyasu has done that. You know, Kyle Walker, Danilo, Cancelo, Zinchenko. You can see that way above the median. So. Unbelievable, and this is actually based on minimum of 500 pass attempts and 400 completions to qualify. Data only includes matches when player lined up at fullback. So you know that I'm not cheating when I'm saying that he played as a fullback while this data was collected. So why why are why are, why did Arsenal go for Tomiyasu? What does Tomiyasu actually bring to the table? I already mentioned how he's a little quick, he's tall, and <clears throat> you know a one v one against us uh, against any striker. Gets very narrow, does really good. So, what else? What else does he bring? Why did Arsenal sign him? So, Athletic.uk have, have given a very good amount of details about that. They say that Tomiyasu had dreams of being a swimmer, but a childhood accident saw him change course. While running on a treadmill at his grandmother's house, he slipped and injured his jaw. The stitches meant he could not swim for some time, so he tried football instead. With Hector Bellerin, Bellerin keen on a move back to Spain, Arsenal explored the possibility of a swap deal for a fullback from that league, such as Serginio Dest or Emerson Royal. Talks regarding Royal progressed furthest, with recruitment staff struck by a physical profile that seemed tailor-made for the Premier League. Coaching staff, however, however, were concerned he would not fit the system. Arsenal have been looking for a fullback who can tuck into central areas in possession, enabling Arsenal to build up in a back three if so desired. They were also seeking someone who could combine with and cover for Ben White. When it came to right back, Arsenal targeted a very specific profile. Arsenal were linked publicly with moves for Norwich's uh, Max Ahrens and Brighton's Tariq Lamptey. Internally, however, there were concerns over their height and ability in the air. RB Leipzig's Tyler Adams, if you remember, we were linked to Tyler Adams because he can play in the midfield as well as an inverted fullback. He's also much admired at London, admired at London Colney, but is intent on remaining in Germany for now. Kieran Trippier, who was keen on a return to the Premier League, did not fit the club's strategy of recruiting from a younger age profile. Now, Arsenal's start to the season had convinced Arteta and technical director Edu that adding a right back was of paramount importance. At Arteta's behest, the wheels were set into motion. Tomiyasu had to come in, and this is how. How, how I met your mother. No, no, this is how Arsenal signed Takehiro Tomiyasu. That's where the, the Shaolin soccer from Japan has. Uh, he's here. Mr. Chang is here. Well, Granit Xhaka opens up, has, re, uh, has opened up about his red card for the first time after, uh, you know, that incident. So he says, I hit the ball 100% and got a red. The pictures were not checked by the VAR. I, I've seen tougher tackles that weren't even assessed as a foul. Am I prejudiced against? I don't know. And according to Photomac, Fenerbahce manager Vitor Pereira has Cedric Soares on his agenda this summer. Now, already being linked to Fenerbahce, Cedric Soares might leave Arsenal. So, crazy stuff. Well, Matteo Genduzzi has replaced Corentin Toliso in the French team. Congratulations, Matteo. He replaces Coranta and Toliso, and that's really good. That's really, always really good, <clears throat> especially breaking into that French national team. My God, that's like it's like being a uh, being a general category and winning a government seat. I swear to God, it's 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 difficult. It's 
it's really like impossible at what at points but yes that is that and uh, Takehiro Tomiyasu on Instagram shared this image with a caption um, what a feeling I'm so happy to be part of this amazing club I can't wait to play with the shirts of Arsenal see you at the Emirates Stadium the new journey has begun well, surely it has begun for Takahiro Tomiyasu. But the big question is, has it actually begun for Arsenal? Do Can Arsenal think something really better with him? So, Reese Nelson's loan to Feyenoord has been in the pipeline for a while. Frank Arnesan says, uh, you know, obviously about this for a near a month now. Reese replies, Ricky has done so well to keep in contact with everyone. Well, now the big question, how do you exactly believe Arsenal's transfer window has gone so far and which player are you excited about or which player do you want to see the most you know for me of course i've seen uh, i've seen what i what i what i can see from martin odegaard uh, i would want to see now and i'm really excited for uh, ramsdale tomiyasu ben white three together playing in a single game i think uh, if, if, I, if i want all of them in a team i think tomiyasu odegaard ben white and ramsdale together i would really want to see that 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 uh, that team with these four in uh, that would be interesting, you know, Arsenal really signing some interesting players. But the big question is, will they be fit or virus-free together at one point of time? And that needs to be after this international break. Everyone has to be on the same page. And most importantly, they got to be in the uh, team sheet. So Saul Campbell has given his advice is that he could actually come to Arsenal to help the players get something from him a piece of advice he says i'd love to go there and help them out i would there is a serious problem there and i'm happy to help even if it's a couple of days a week the tricks and the trade of the trade and the little things there's a blind spot there and i'd help them out all day long it's been happening a lot and it doesn't matter who plays at the back it seems to be the same type of occurrences it's a young team there's great footballers but i think they just need the know-how tricks of the trade picking up little things little nuggets of information that someone like me or someone else can give over to them those little details will make the difference and world's most expensively assembled squads you can see man city topping that list arsenal at the sixth spot with 495.95 million pounds spent above real madrid my god they've hardly spent real madrid this season but they got eduardo camavinga so you can't blame them they got a really good player there fantastic i would say so Vinay Venkatesham has finally approached about what exactly was Arsenal's approach in this transfer window. He says, our approach for this window was framed by fully recognizing that we are not where we want to be on the pitch. Finishing 8th last season with no European football for the first time in many years. Our strategy is to fill our squad with some of Europe's most exciting young talent with players from both our academy and further afield that can grow and develop together under Mikel to take us where we want to get to. Although COVID and no European football bring financial challenges, our owners, Stan and Josh Kroenke, have sanctioned very significant investment in this transfer window in support of our strategy. Well, that's what he actually opened up about. But more importantly, do you know why NKTS deal to Crystal Palace did not materialize? Was it Arsenal asking for £20 million and they did not budge that Crystal Palace only wanted to pay 12 Well, Alex Crook says, one Premier League chief executive said the problem with the Crystal Palace deal was not Arsenal's asking price. It was the demands of Eddie and Ketia's agent in terms of agent's fees and it was Nketiah's wage demands. And that's the reason why. Unbelievable, man. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Unreal. Well, Gary Neville has spoken about Arsenal. He says, Man United came out of a period under Sir Alex Ferguson. It's very difficult. Arsenal are suffering in that way too. The hangover of the Arsene Wenger era. There's something not right at Arsenal. I think there's a lack of surety at the top. We've got to stabilise after the period they've had with Arsene Wenger. You know what? Let, let's just... Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Not going to react on much about it. So, that is that. So, let me know what you guys think about Arsenal's transfer window and the signings that you are excited about, if you are at the moment, because I'm, I'm sure a lot of Arsenal fans are... Not a lot of Arsenal fans, but yes, uh, there are Arsenal fans who literally hate uh, everything that Mikel Arteta and Edu pull out because, you know, the whole reason why this is happening is they want Arsenal to sign up a bloody midfielder. They don't have one and they are afraid of what happens to Thomas Partey. So, 
Here's what uh, Ian Wright, uh, the, he sent up a message for Hector Bellerin. He says, always represented the club with pure love and respect. We all have, we have all learned so much from you. Enjoy your time at Betty's. All love, Hector Bellerin. Great to see that. And it looks like in the January transfer window, Arsenal would be looking to get in Eve Bissouma. Why do I say this? There are, there are some sources that are mentioning it. Once it becomes uh, you know more concrete or uh, if we get more and more information about it, I'll definitely put uh, proper light into it. But for now, Keep an eye on Yves Bissouma again. I will see you in the next one. Until then, cheers and thank you so much for supporting me throughout the transfer window. I hope you add, I added a lot of value to your life. And of course, because you were uh, chasing Arsenal news, I'm, I'm pretty much sure I, I provided that. I, uh, I think I am successful in doing that. So if, if I am, hit that like button. If I'm not, hit that dislike button. And abuse the crap out of me in that comment section. Cheers, I'll see you in the next one.